Hello everyone, welcome to another lecture for the column design in the RCDC. In the previous lecture, we have already seen about the design setting. So we have looked upon different design setting which is present in the RCDC. We have looked upon the perform the ductile design, liability reduction factor, effective length factor. So these are the important setting for the design we have looked upon in the RCDC in the previous lectures. Now in this particular lecture, we are going to look at upon the reinforcement setting. So reinforcement setting also is one of the important setting here and we have to carefully give the reinforcement setting for the RCDC. Now in the reinforcement setting, the first thing we will find here that is the column percentage in a steel. So if you look at that column percentage steel, the minimum and the maximum table are given here. And for the minimum table, 0 0.4 is given. But if you remember that when I was explaining you in ETAPS the column design, I will explain you that maximum and minimum percentage were different. So minimum percentage for the steel in the column was 0 0.8 and maximum as per IS456 I was talking, IS456 2000, the minimum percentage is 0 0.8 and the maximum is 8 percentage. But in the RCDC by default you will find that minimum percentage is 0 0.4 and maximum is 4. Now if you want to change it, if you wish to change this to as per IS456 2000 you can change it. But if you look at the practical way of giving is like that. That minimum percentage you give it 0 0.8 this you give it 0 0.8 and the maximum percentage you give it 4 percentage only what is the given by by default rcdc you don't give it 80 per 8 percent because practically if you look at you're not going to give it practically 8 percent any of your column practically you have to give it only 4 percentage only in this column for the steel now i think that column percentage is clear to you now next thing is your share wall percentage now share wall percentage I will explain you in another lecture when I will cover the share wall design at that time I will explain you that what the percentage you have to keep it here. Now the next is your longitudinal rebar spacing. First of all try to understand that what this term means longitudinal rebar spacing. Then we will look at it, what is the minimum and the maximum we need to keep it. If I will open a one typical column section and elevation here. So if you look at it, that we have an elevation of the column and this is the section of the column here. And in the elevation, if you just look at that, this is the longitudinal rebar we have. And this is the transverse rebar we have. Now in this RCDC setting, they are asking you that what is the longitudinal rebar spacing for the maximum you know you want to keep it. Don't confuse here with longitudinal rebar with the link spacing. Because here the terms, the longitudinal rebar means here that they are talking about what is the rebar which you have placed as longitudinally and what is the spacing you want to keep it maximum and minimum one so they are talking about this longitudinal rebar spacing some people may confuse here with the link spacing so this is the link spacing we have so this is not a setting is for the link spacing this setting is for the longitudinal rebar spacing so they are talking about this what is the spacing you want to keep it for the longitudinal rebar in your column so this spacing they are talking about so for this spacing, what is the minimum want to keep it? 25 and the maximum 250. So you can change it as per your requirement, but by default setting is enough. So minimum you give it 25 mm only and the maximum you can give it 250 mm. Now the next is your preferred rebar spacing. So in this you will find equal spaced 125 mm. So this is like what is the preferred rebar spacing you want to give it for the column is like that for the longitudinal reinforcement. So minimum is 25 mm maximum is 250 mm and what is the preferred what do you prefer to give it as a spacing for the rebar here that is 125 mm now i think it is very clear to you now next is your what you want to give it for the zone 1 zone 2 and mid zone so as you know that this zone 1 zone 2 and mid zone will come when i will teach you the shear wall so in that you know that there is a boundary element so they are divided into different zone here and also there is a mid zone also at the time of the shear wall design in the RCDC, I will explain you this all the values what you need to give it. Now come to the next which is your link spacing. So the link spacing is your transverse reinforcement spacing or we can say ring spacing and all. If you look at the typical section and elevation of the column here and if you just want to look at the link spacing here if to understand what this link spacing is. So this is the link spacing. So if you look at this is the rebar we have for the link. So this is the link rebar we have. And if you just look at in elevation, this looks something like this. And when you just look at in the section, it looks something like this. So if you look at from the top view in the section, it will be looked something like this. And from the elevation view, it will be looked something like this. Now, 
what is the link spacing so link spacing is your what is the center to center distance between two of the link so the two of the link here let's suppose this is the link, one link we have another link we have this and what is the spacing you want to give it between two of the link so this is the link spacing they're talking about so the minimum how much you want to give it 125 mm and the maximum 300 mm so you can change it as per your requirement here so what the design demand it will be there so the distance between two of the ring will be this only so minimum will be 125 mm and the maximum will be 300 mm it will not go beyond the 300 mm and it will not be less than the 125 mm so this thing you have to keep it in your mind now the next is your column rebar now before going to the column rebar one very important thing you have to keep it in mind that we have a rebar diameter here so as per the indian standard or indian practice if you just look at that we have 8 mm of rebar 10 mm 12 we don't use 13 mm rebar so this is remain as an antique only even we don't use 14 mm rebar so this also remain as a antique only then we use 16 mm rebar we don't use 18 mm rebar so this will remain as an antique only then we have a 22 mm of rebar which is not used so this will be as a antique only then 25 mm then 28 mm it will be antique only so when you scroll down you will find few more rebar which is the 32 mm and 40 mm which is used as indian practice here why this rebar diameter become more important because when the rcdc will do the auto design and auto detailing and if you just selected all the rebar here then this rebar only it will be displayed in your design and it will display in the detailing also so let's suppose that by mistakenly just you selected any of the rebar which is not present in the market or it is not available in the market and you have selected this 14 mm also and this 14 mm is not available in the market when you go to do auto design and auto detailing at that time 14 mm rebar will also show you and it will give you in the design so better to not select only so if you just not selected this so in the auto design it will not show you to give the 14 mm of rebar here so that's the reason why you have to select the rebar which is available in the market if you selected a rebar of 22 mm this is not available in the market then what will happen your all the things will become wrong only because 22 mm of rebar is not available only in the market in, in india i'm talking about so these things become more important very very important so so what the all the, this tick you have just seen here this only you select it because this only things you will find in the market and definitely for the column no one is going to use 40 mm don't think that this also you will find rare only 40 mm rebar so maybe you just untick this also now come to the column rebar now in the column rebar we have to give it the minimum rebar dia and the maximum rebar dia so as per is 456 2000 the minimum rebar dia is 12 mm and maximum you can give it a 40 mm but in this type of the structure, I told you that 40 mm is used rare only. So I will not give it maximum as a 40 mm. I will give it this to the 25 mm as a maximum dia of the rebar here. And for the minimum, I will keep it as a 12 mm only. Now next is your shear wall rebar. So this I told you that when I will explain you at the time of the shear wall, I will explain that what is the minimum and the maximum you have to give it. Now come to the link here. So link. You can just find that minimum rebar is 8 mm this is good don't give it any change here so minimum diameter for the link 8 mm is more than enough now next is your use bundle ductile link so this you just remain this as a ticked only now next is your links in the links you have a column first of all and in this you have a two option to give it one is your hopes and second is your ties so definitely for the link for the columns you will give as a hoops only so this will remain as a selected and for the wall also definitely you are going to give it as a hoops only so this is also will remain as selected only and tie style will be as a closed it will not be as open this will be as a closed only this all thing will remain as a same only what actually it is there now come to the main link with boundary element so it is a matter of boundary element definitely then share wall will come so this will covered in the next lecture of your share wall design in the rcdc so right now i'm just not going to cover this now come next which is the round of factor so spacing round of factor is given as a 25 mm and john round of factor is 25 mm now try to understand that what this round of factor actually means here let's suppose that you have calculated a spacing for the link and you have just came out with a spacing of 132 mm so definitely 122 mm you are not going to give it 
So instead of giving 132 mm, you are going to give it 150 mm because you have to give it as a round of it. Let's suppose in case you have just calculated and you have just found out that a spacing is coming 145 mm in the calculation. Definitely you are not going to give it 145 mm. Instead of this, you will give it 150 mm. You have to make it round of it. How much round? Of 25 mm of the round. Now I will ask you one very interesting question here that why this round of given only 25 mm? Why not it is given a different like 26, 28, 29 like that? Why this is given only 25 here? Because if you want to convert this in inches, so 1 inch is equal to 25.4. So this is approx to 1 inch. That's the reason it is very convenient to give it as a 25 mm as a round of it and because this is very close to 1 inch. So that's the reason for both of the construction point of view also and while actually design point of the view, it is very easy to give it. Now we have came to the end of the reinforcement setting and in this reinforcement setting we have seen lot of important things and this was the initial setting which we have to give it for the RCDC. No, don't think that this is going to be a final reinforcement setting. This is going to be changed during the project also. So don't think that this is going to be a final only. Little bit we will change later on in the project also. So after giving all the initial setting for the reinforcement in the RCDC, you have to give it OK. And when you will just give it OK, you will find that there will be some error showing you. And this is error because you have unselected the 40 mm diameter rebar and in the shear wall rebar, you have given the maximum rebar as a 40 mm. So what you are going to do here, instead of giving 40, you give it this as a 25 mm only and after that you give it OK, then it will not show you any error. Now we have come to the end of reinforcement setting. In this we have looked upon a lot of important things. So after studying the reinforcement setting, we are going to look at more important things in the next lecture which is the detailing and drawing setting and zone and rebar setting. So this we will look at in the next upcoming lecture. Thank you for watching. See you in the next lecture. A span instruct here is PG program in structure design and analysis. In this program, you will be learning ETAPS, SAFE, RCDC, Revit and CAD in very detail. In this program, you will be getting live classes, pre-recorded sessions, quizzes, project submissions and checking and also will be getting a personal training also. Also you will be getting dedicated career service which help you to provide placement in top companies. Our student is placed in top companies in India also in abroad. Also if you want to open your own consultancy, our program and team will help you to achieve that goal. Also this program is designed for the working professionals. Also it is designed for the student also. So you will be getting a dashboard here and in this you will get an enroll course here. After clicking in enroll course, you can start learning this. So this is the curriculum which we will be learning in this program. And in this curriculum, we will be doing total 4 projects. Also in this program, you will be getting live classes for the discussions and solving your doubt. For the demo class, open our website that is spanestack.in. You will get a link in description box also. And after that, you just need to fill your name, email address, WhatsApp number and choose your date, time and schedule your live class. You can also make a program related inquiry on given number. Looking forward to see you in our course program.